Hey man, nice to meet you. Um, what do you study, by the way? So in German, it's called Wirtschaftsinformatik. Ah, Wirtschaftsinformatik. Wait, Wirtschafts means economy, right? So it's like economics and informatics. Yeah, we actually don't have any mandatory economics courses, but it's more business oriented. We have topics such as like finance, accounting, etc. Ah, okay, so that's like business informatics, right? The official term is called information systems, but uh, yeah, essentially you could say so. Damn, okay, that's kind of confusing, but uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, tell me about it. So yeah, it doesn't matter if you're in your first year or in your third year, you'll always encounter these phases where you're gonna have to explain what your major is. Sometimes you'll even forget yourself how to explain it the best way possible. But yeah, I guess it's just part of the experience. I remember there was a comment under one of the previous videos that basically said um, Wirtschafts Informatics kind of looks like witchcraft informatic. And uh, yeah, honestly, that's, that's not far from the truth. For some people, it sounds like something completely mystical and crazy. But yeah, from now on, I'm just going to say Vinfo instead of Wirtschafts Informatik because it's just a bit too long. I like abbreviations. And so yeah, if you Google like Vinfo rankings, um, in Germany, it's actually the Tum Vinfo is actually number one. And actually, I didn't even know that the Tum Informatik is actually third place in Germany for some reason. But I made a separate video about rankings, so you can check it out. But yeah, don't let the rankings influence you too much. Even though we're all guilty of it, we always want to strive for the best. But yeah, just watch the video, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. So yeah, if you go to this website, you can see the sort of the study plan for the Bachelor of Info. Uh, wait, actually, there's an English website. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> Page not available in English. Yeah, as you can see, the tone is excellent. Actually, funnily enough, I think even in my first year, I was showing someone something about my curriculum um, and they didn't speak German and it didn't work back then. So I guess uh, four years later, this, they still didn't update it. Yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, here's the study plan. As you can see, it's split into six semesters, roughly 30 credits each semester. And then you have different kind of blocks like informatics, Wirtschafts Informatik, and then Wirtschaftswissenschaften, which is basically like the business courses and Wirtschaftsinformatik is like something in between the technical and the business part and then you also have like maths and some electives so yeah, I'll just fly through the semesters, go course by course, kind of give you an overview of what I remember about the course and sort of the relative difficulty again, this is subjective, it's my own opinion and this was, what, like four years ago uh, so maybe things changed um, Actually, in some cases, I think they're trying to change the language in some of these courses from German to English. So maybe courses that I took in German are now all of a sudden in English. So yeah, just keep that in mind, take it with a grain of salt. So in your first semester from the informatics part, you're going to have Info1 and PDP, that's the abbreviation. Um, so together that's like 12 credits. Honestly, it's like one of the most time intensive courses that you're going to have because you basically learn Java from like A to Z. Say for example, I did Studienkolleg, if you didn't know what Studienkolleg is, uh, check out my video about it. But there, I remember we had computer science and in one semester we went through like the basics of programming. And in this course, we reached the same level in just like three weeks. So it's uh, every week you advance quite quick. Um, so I would recommend always stay up to date, don't skip classes, uh, revise if you have to, and ideally come with some prior knowledge specifically about basics in Java, uh, just so it's not like a big shock to you in the beginning and then you'll be really demotivated right from the start. Yeah, I think that's a good tip. Just come in with some preparation, to be honest, for this course. Usually a course at TUM and in general at German universities is six credits and each credit amounts to about like 30 hours of uh, workload. And basically you usually have a lecture. If it's worth six credits, then you probably have like one lecture, maybe two lectures a week, and also one kind of like an exercise tutorial. But here the tutorial, the practical part, is basically a course itself. So you can just kind of estimate just from the credits how much time they want you to invest. So it's not a normal six credit course. If you take the theoretical course, the Info Eins, and combine it with the practical PDP 6, that's 12 credits in total. So yeah, I think looking at the credits is a good like orientation point, sort of. But uh, it's not always true. Sometimes you would feel like a six credit course wasn't worth the six credits or if uh, maybe sometimes it's more than six credits. Uh, but in general, I would say it sort of balances out. Some courses are a little bit less workload, some a bit more. 
Uh, this is one of the tougher ones, I would say, in my opinion. And yeah, also you'll have a lot to do with penguins. Um, I can't explain it right now, it's sort of like an inside joke. I don't know if it's still a running joke in that course. But yeah, maybe if you ever take the course, then you'll figure out whether it's still ongoing. From Vinfo, this is sort of introduction to information systems. And it basically covers what even is information systems, how, how information systems are used in companies. Specifically in this course, there's more modeling, so it's like more theoretical. Um, as far as I can remember, there's no programming whatsoever. Um, so it's more about like diagrams, ERMs, like entity relationship models and whatnot. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention the previous course, so Info 1 and Piggy Pay is in German, and Intro to Vinfo is also in German. The introduction to Vinfo sort of at a medium level. I think there's a lot of like theory to cover, you have a lot of slides and stuff, but I think it's very doable. Also, I feel like these Vinfo modules, some people really like them, some people don't like them because they feel like it's just a waste, like why not take informatic courses and then business courses and then that's kind of enough and these Vinfo modules are kind of overkill because sometimes over the semesters you feel like we're just like repeating stuff and I don't know if it's just me but like from these courses what I remember is that they always had these crazy diagrams I feel like they just go into PowerPoint and choose shapes and then they just click every single shape there is and put it into one slide yeah honestly sometimes the slides and these Vinfo modules I, I was a little bit skeptical about. Pretty sure they added some value. But yeah, as I said, I feel like it's uh, mixed feelings about these modules. But yeah, until you take one or two, then you'll get the feel of it. And uh, you can decide for yourself if it's like uh, something that you like or not. Also, if you click on any of these modules, then you'll be redirected to a website. And you can even change it to English up here um, and sort of see what the requirements are. And then you can kind of see what the prerequisites are, how the examination is done, what you will be learning content-wise. I'm just skimming through them and giving my opinion on them. But uh, obviously, if you want like a more detailed overview, then just click on one of them and then you can see a little bit more in detail of what you can expect. The next one, Buchführung und Rechnungswesen, that's basically financial accounting. And yeah, I think you'll quickly notice there's a difference between the exams at the Faculty of Informatics and at the... Uh, Tum School of Management, usually at the School of Management, so with these business courses it's typically multiple choice and uh, the exams are fairly easier. And yeah, with this course you learn about financial statements and assets and liabilities and so on and so forth. I think they're good basics whether you want to go into accounting, start your own firm, whatever the case may be, I think it's solid basics that I think everyone should know. And yeah, also these business courses, uh, you can either take in English or German. I remember I think I took this in German, but it really doesn't matter. You still get six credits if you take it in English. I usually recommend for foreign students to take it in German because you can you know, improve your German, learn more German. And if you're a German student, then they recommend you to take the English course so you can practice English. From the maths, uh, you have discrete structures. Um, yeah, about discrete structures. I thought I was good at math in high school until I came and took this class. Honestly, this is also one of the hardest classes that I took personally. And I think it changed from year to year if I looked at the stats from one year and then compared it to the following year. Sometimes there's a quite a big difference in terms of like who's teaching it and how they're grading the exercises and whatnot. The content usually stays the same. I think there's like minimal changes. But yeah, for me personally, it was one of the hardest courses. I think even the stats kind of showed this. Actually, in one of my previous videos where I put the stats of one of the exams where like basically every other student failed, um, it was actually from this course. And honestly, it's not even a surprise that they put some of the hardest courses in the first semester because they want to filter out the students from the very beginning. And uh, yeah, I know that kind of sounds harsh, but if I'm not mistaken, from what I've heard, like the uni gets money for every single admitted student. So obviously it makes sense for them to admit as many students as possible in the beginning. But obviously they want to keep the students that uh, are ambitious and they want to continue their studies and finish them and not keep the students who just want sort of maybe the perks and the benefits of being a student without actually you know, passing these courses. If you look next to some of these courses in the first semester, they kind of have a star next to it. And these are the so-called GOPs. And basically down here, you can see kind of the requirements of uh, how many courses you have to finish within the first two semesters. They yeah, basically you have to pass two, either in the first exam or in the retake exam, which happens like 
a few months later, like two months later. Um, so exams are usually in like in February and then the retakes in April. And in the summer semester, usually exams are like end of July, August and retakes are like in September, October. But yeah, regarding GOPs and like what you have to pass to stay enrolled. And there are also some like regulations on how many credits you have to have by a specific semester. I think you have to have like 60 by the fourth semester or something along those lines. But those are obviously a bit more lenient. If you actually do 30 every semester, then by the fourth semester, you should have like 120. So yeah, in your second semester, you have introduction to software engineering and fundamentals of like algorithms and data structures. Introduction to software engineering, I think is very beneficial because uh, in your first semester, you sort of get the basics of programming and I would say you even become like an intermediate programmer. Um, if you pass the course, if you at least got the hang of the most of the things, I'm not saying you have to perfect everything that you were taught. It's not an easy course in the first semester, but with the introduction to software engineering, you sort of learn about large scale software projects, and not anymore working individually on a single problem, but also like source management and Git and working in a team basically. I think that's beneficial also for like your future career and so on. Algorithms and data structures, I feel like that's in like every single university. If you study anything to do with computer science, I think you're going to have a course related to that. So that's like no surprise. Yeah, I would sort of put them in the medium difficulty category. I think the fundamentals of algorithms and data structures for most people is probably going to be harder than introduction to software engineering. And uh, yeah, don't be discouraged. Exams at TUM are quite hard, I would say. Um, also from people I've talked to over the years. Like I knew people who in school, they were like A students, never failed exams. And then they come to TUM and sometimes they do fail an exam. So don't be automatically discouraged. So I don't want to talk too much about the difficulty and how time intensive it is because it's going to vary from person to person. We each have our like weaknesses and strengths. And I think honestly, until you take like, I would say a semester or two and you kind of get the feel of what each part of this um, major kind of is going to expect from you. So for example, if you take like two, three informatic courses, then you're, you'll get a hang of how the exams are, how you study for them. And also the same thing with business courses after two or three exams, you will notice that, hey, it's a bit different. And for me, this is probably easier, maybe even harder for some people. I don't know. Moving on, you have IT and society. This was a course I think when I took it back in like 2019, in the summer semester, we were like the guinea pigs, we were the first people to ever go through this course. It's actually quite interesting, there were lots of like debates in the class, and it's a little bit more theoretical oriented, so you're not programming again. Yeah, for example, we talked about like monitoring and like face IDing, and for example, how it's done in China, and how this affects the society, and sort of debating pros and cons and also talking about big techs and so there are a lot of different um, sort of debates happening in this class. I think it's pretty interesting. We all thought the exam is going to be a bit easier because it's not as technical um, but because we were the first ones I think they did it on purpose that they didn't want to be too lenient. I'm not sure how it is now after a few years. Next one is cost accounting which is one of the business courses and uh, yeah, here you discuss different types of stuff, for example, like break-even analysis, different types of like managerial cost accounting. Oh yeah, and also about the previous courses, I didn't mention if they were in German or English, but you can always click on the course and then see if it's uh, in the description, if it's uh, taught in English or German. For example, introduction to software engineering is in English, but data structures and algorithms is in German. And yeah, next up is linear algebra from the math part. And honestly, out of the three big math courses that you have to take, which are all worth eight credits, I would say this one was the more pleasant one, in my opinion, um, because in the first semester, it was still kind of like a shock, you know, being new to uni, you have all these hard courses. So this was a bit more like lenient. I'll get to the last math course in a bit. But yeah, linear algebra, I think it's like a base for a lot of things that you will do in uni, especially for the more advanced courses and now all the hype about machine learning and neural networks and so on. So I think this is something that you're going to have to um, take. And I think it's a good base, as I said, for also more advanced topics. In the third semester, you have databases. And I think even a prerequisite for this is discrete structures, which you had in your first semester. And this starts off very theoretical, but um, in the end, I think a third of the exam is SQL. So obviously you 
will learn SQL, a little bit more of the practical, fun things you could say. But in general, at home, a lot of the things are theoretical, so you will have a lot of slides, a lot of math. So I don't expect everything to be like sunshine and rainbows and every lecture you're you know, tackling practical problems in the industry, etc. It's a university and here generally it's more theoretical. Yeah, I would put this honestly in like a medium difficulty. For some people it's really easy, for some people really hard. Depends if you worked with databases before or not. Software engineering for business applications, this is honestly similar to introduction to software engineering, except that you touch on different aspects such as persistence, and also configuration management. And Seba is also in Java, just like introduction to software engineering. I think the lecturers at Tom just looked at Java and were like, damn, Java kind of thick. Yeah, but honestly it makes sense because in your first semester, you have so much to do with Java that it makes sense for the future lecturers to assume that that's your sort of base level. That's the language that you worked most with during your studies. But that obviously changes with like seminars and sort of electives that you can take, which I'll get to in a second. But you will see some overlap with introduction to software engineering. And this is why I said sometimes people think that these courses are a little bit overkill, but I think you always still learn a thing or two. Yeah, it's debatable whether you need a whole other course for the amount that you learn or for the value added. Investing in financial management is quite nice. Um, again, you can take it in English or German. You learn about analyzing financial statements, also investment analysis. I think this course is also interesting for you privately. Also, if you want to invest, you understand how markets work, how you evaluate companies and so on. Analysis. In this course, you have topics about like convergence of series, harmonic series, geometric series, and so on. You have a little bit of like Beweise, what's, what's Beweise? Um, proofs, damn, I'm forgetting English. Yeah, so basically you have, you have some proofs also. And yeah, these math courses, as I mentioned previously, are worth eight credits. Some people say it's too much for a math course and it actually should be six. But if you look at the statistics, more people fail these courses. So I don't know, I think it's appropriate that it has eight credits. For some people, it's too theoretical and there are a lot of proofs. But yeah, even in high school, I had calculus and I thought this was going to be a bit easier since I have some like prerequisites. Still kind of tough for me, but again, I think it's very doable as well. And then you have the Val Modula, so the electives. I think you have 15 in total in your whole studies. I was actually stupid and I thought we need 25, so I did more than we had to. I did economics 1 and 2, so macro and microeconomics, which I think is quite nice because in the whole study plan, you don't have any mandatory economics courses, and I mean the major itself, Wirtschafts Informatik, Wirtschaft literally stands for, I mean, it means economy. So I think it's nice to have at least one economics course. I took both because they sort of build up on each other. These courses were worth six credits, so they're kind of like a normal course, you could say. And then I took some smaller courses like autonomous driving, which was worth three credits. I think most people take it in their masters if they study like robotics. But yeah, I found it interesting, so I want to take it. Quite nice, but it was very physics heavy and we had like no physics whatsoever in our first like two years at Tom. Actually, in your whole major Wirtschafts Informatik, you don't really need physics, but it was still a nice change up. It was still interesting. I think with the electives, it's nice. It's your only sort of time to pick something that not everybody has to take so it's, i mean that's why it's called elective but yeah i would recommend do a few even do more than what you have to do because then you can always pick and choose which one you want to be in your certificate i mean in your diploma and then the rest will be in your zusatzleistung and so sort of extra courses you completed and yeah i mean even though you don't have to i think it's still a good idea in my opinion and yeah, other than that, I took entrepreneurship, which was also three credits. And I also took networks for monetary transactions, I believe. Course organization wasn't like optimal, to be honest, but you still learn a thing or two. Yeah, the exam also wasn't that tough. It was also pretty interesting because it was like a fintech course, you could say, which for me was quite appealing. Okay, moving on to the fourth semester. Fourth semester, you have networking, Rechnernetz and Verteilte Systeme. I think this is quite important because I think in every computer science degree you need some sort of networking class to understand how protocols work, how the internet came about. So I think this is quite nice. I think in this course you either have the option of doing the exercises either in C, C++ or Java. Again, Java is going to be like universally accepted at Tom because that's what you start off with. And a lot of the courses use Java, even some of the master courses they expect you to have some basic level understanding of Java. But yeah, other than the first semester pay to pay where you 
are graded for your programming. Every other course, the programming, the practical part is almost like a grade bonus. So if you do the exercises which require programming, you get sort of a small grade bonus, but it's not required to pass the exam. The exam at the end is mostly purely theoretical. Maybe you will have some sections where you program a little bit on paper, but uh, it's quite minimal compared to your first semester. I recommend to do the exercises because it's always more practical practice practical practice um, and you also learn more about git and working in a team and these are beneficial things later on for work and yeah i think technical unis in germany are a little bit more focused on theory but in real life most likely if you end up in a job even as a working student it'll be the practical skills that you put to use so yeah, I think just take every opportunity you can to practice more and more. Operations research is quite interesting because it relates to some managerial problems about planning, for example. So you have topics like linear programming, mixed integer programming, network flows. You also have the famous knapsack problem, which is quite related to a lot of the dynamic programming exercises you even have in interviews and in general, like if you know, lead code and so on. And I think it's also just interesting to see how you can optimize a lot of the things that you do on a daily basis. Obviously, we don't think of it that way every day. I remember in the class, which was like something about a party, someone was trying to throw a party and they had a specific number of bottles and people had certain requirements and yeah, modeling it. Obviously, you don't do this on a daily basis, but it's quite interesting to tackle it from that point of view. And yeah, it's a little bit more theoretical, a little bit more algorithmic -y. That's not even a word, but yeah, it's more about algorithms, but in my opinion, it was easier than, for example, fundamentals of uh, data structures and algorithms. Maybe because it was a different faculty, maybe the way they taught it, I don't know. As I said, subjective could be different for other people. Empirical research methods, one of the business courses, um, mostly about hypothesis testing, statistics, but more from a theoretical point of view, like why we do it, what this helps us achieve, etc. As a Vinfo student, you can choose between DVT, which is Discrete Wahrscheinlichkeitstheorie, or Statistics for Business Students, and I think you know what most people take. <laughs> DVT, I think, is required by informatics students, so if you study pure informatics, then you have to take it. Then for student, you can pick whether you take this, which has all the past three math modules as a prerequisite, or you can take Statistics, which has no prerequisites. So. Yeah, honestly, I would say if you're more interested in maths and more of the theoretical aspects, then take DVT. But statistics, I think, is also a very good base because you start literally from zero. You talk about means and medians, and then you slowly build up to more um, advanced topics, you can say. Statistics is also more practical. You learn R, which is also quite nice. So you have like an extra tool in your technical arsenal. And also for some of the more advanced data analysis classes, it's usually a prerequisite to know some R, they're not gonna go over, you know, downloading R Studio, how to run things in R, etc. So I think it's a good course to take. Most people take statistics as a Vinfo student, but if you like, you want a more theoretical challenge, take DVT. And then you also have the seminar, which is quite nice. It's also kind of like an elective. So you have a lot of seminars. You can take a bunch of things. Honestly, you have so many things to pick from. I don't know, like topics from the top of my head, there was like tsunami simulation, there's like ethical hacking, like binary overflow. You can take things about like, for example, trends and in information systems, something I took, for example, which even has like three subtopics. There are, however, two annoying things about the seminars. So the first thing is availability. Not every course is available every semester. And sometimes even if they drop a course, it's still sometimes on the list for like a few semesters. So yeah, the organization at Tom is, um, not always ideal. There's even a sticker that goes around in group chats which says the O in TUM stands for organization. For example, I took trends in information systems and one of the three subtopics was data mining, which I wanted to do. But the PhD student, which was responsible for that like subgroup, was not there and so they kind of eliminated the topic and spontaneously put like a new topic. Here the seminar is very subjective. Some people have really hard seminars, some people have really easy ones, some people have really enjoyable ones, some people never want to do a seminar again. Okay, again, it's super subjective, but don't be too worried. By the time you reach your fourth or fifth semester, same thing goes for the lab course, which is in the next semester, in the fifth semester. And you'll see by that time, you'll have talked to people, like to older students, even to professors, to your tutors who are holding the tutorials for some of the classes. And so you can get sort of tips and tricks 
and uh, you will know what's relevant, what would be a good fit for you in that specific year, in that specific semester. So don't worry about it too much. But yeah, just know it's a very good time to sort of explore and take things that you didn't take before. And this is not like mandatory courses, which everyone has to take. It's mostly based on interest. And even though like in my case, I didn't ultimately take what I wanted to take in the first place, uh, we ended up writing a paper which got published in a conference. So I guess there's like a silver lining to every situation. And yeah, honestly, make use of these courses. You can also learn new things. We, for example, did a data analysis in Python and I never had anything to do with Python in my university. And so that was a, also a very sort of good practice to use it for academic purposes, not just for fun or for like individual private use. In the fifth semester, I'll maybe start from the lab course, which similar to the seminar, you have a lot of topics. It's worth 10 credits, so it's more time intensive, as you can tell from the amount of credits. But you also have so many topics. Again, personal interest. Over the semesters, you kind of figure out what you like, what you don't like. And based on the topics, based on talking to people, you'll figure out a good fit for yourself. You have Valmodula, I talked about the electives I took. Again, there's like a whole list. They're divided into sections and you can pick out things that you like. And yeah, there's there's a lot to choose from, so I'm not gonna go through the whole list now. And you also have electives which are called Überfachliche Grundlagen, which are basically courses that extend the type of courses that you take on a very regular basis. So for example, you can take courses about sociology, I think even psychology, or what I recommend, so you have nine credits, six of those can be language courses. And at TUM, a language course is three credits, and it's not even a whole level. So for example, if you if you know the levels A1, A2, if you ever learn German or any other European language, it's usually divided in, into this type of system. For example, one course is just half of A1, so you would have A1.1, that's three credits, and then A1.2 would be another three credits. So you can take a whole level, um, and that, that would be your six credits. I think it's a good opportunity. You don't have to spend money for a language course. You can learn it while at uni. Language courses are a little bit more chill too. Um, so it's quite nice. Yeah, so I recommend six of the nine credits to take language courses. I, for example, took Russian since I went to Russia. I wanted to have like a base level, which always helps if you want to do an exchange semester in a particular country, then it makes sense to take language courses. And the remaining three credits, you can look at the list again. It's a bit shorter than the electives for your, your Vinfo electives but you can still choose from a lot of things. In fifth semester, you also have middleware. In this course, just like in Seba, you use Java Enterprise Edition, or now it's called Jakarta, I think. And yeah, you mainly talk about middleware and web services, and also large scale technologies, such as like Apache Thrift, and also like socket programming, a little bit of protocol design. Usually, I mean, some Vinfo courses are six credits, some five, I think most of them are five. Um, so let's, it's a little bit less workload. I think I've said enough about Vinfo courses at this point. Yeah, again, you can always click on it, read more about it. And in your last semester, obviously you also have electives, which I already talked about. And you should be happy as a Vinfo student. Most people get 15 credits for their bachelor thesis, which lasts usually three to four months. As a Vinfo student, you get 25 and your bachelor thesis should in theory last five months but even if it lasts five months then those extra 10 credits really don't make up this extra month that you do so really just don't take it for granted it's a nice bonus yeah bachelor thesis uh when you get to that point actually there's no requirement how many credits you have to have before you start your thesis theoretically you can start even in your first semester but obviously i think no professor would accept it because they would say that hey you still don't have some basics and a lot of different topics essentially you can check out the chairs at the faculty of informatics i think there are over like 20 chairs i think maybe even 30 in total and usually they each have a website and then you can check sort of open thesis so topics that they have proposed and then if it's interesting for you you can send out an email say hey you're interested this is your background maybe you've done something related to it either as a working student, or maybe you took a lot of courses in uni related to that topic, or for example, a lot of the electives that you pick were related to that topic. So that's how people would go about it. But my recommendation is, especially in these seminar and lab courses, you typically are in a smaller group. So it's not a lecture full of like 5,000 people. 
that are all taking the same lecture and the professor doesn't know you like by face, they don't recognize you. So yeah, my tip is take advantage of these seminar and lab courses. You're usually in a smaller group setting. And if you perform well, usually stay in contact with that supervisor, with that PhD student, with that professor. And typically this will make your bachelor thesis search much easier. And it also makes sense because especially if you take it based on interest, something that interested you while you took your seminar or your lab course, then a bachelor thesis with a similar topic would obviously also be quite interesting to you and not only interesting but easier to get since you already had something to do with that chair with a specific professor with a specific phd student yeah that's sort of the pain that you have to go through while looking for a thesis if you didn't sort of make connections early on then it's going to be quite tough and you'd have to send a lot of emails still doable and i think if you find no topic after like a semester or two I think even like the examination board helps you or they give you a thesis and you have to do it. So like, don't worry that like, hey, I'll never find anything. You'll find something, but maybe something you're not super interested in. And as I said, next level, much easier, much more interesting is if you keep in contact with these courses, which are a bit smaller. And the best thing you can do is if you tutor or work at a specific chair as a HIWI, for example, so as a research assistant, for example, or as a tutor at a specific chair for a specific course. Since you helped teach that course, they almost want to return the favor and help you find something. And in my experience, that's probably the easiest way to get it and not waste too much time on the bureaucratic stuff and on searching for a topic, etc. Yeah, those would be my tips for bachelor thesis. And yeah, by that point, you have everything done. And yeah, that's the end. That's three years done. Let me just quickly say, not everybody finishes in six semesters. For example, when I started, I wanted to finish ASAP. I went like crazy. I think in my third semester, I even took like 40 plus credits. I have no idea. I had this obsession about, hey, I just want to finish uni as fast as possible. But I'm so glad I actually took an additional year because I did an exchange semester and I wasn't sure about the credit recognition, how well that would go. So I mainly took extra things in my exchange semester and I also did an internship full time where I didn't take courses during university, but I basically focused on my internship. So yeah, my advice would be take your time unless you have a really specific goal and finishing uni as fast as possible is critical, then by all means do that. But I realized that taking your time also opens a lot of opportunities within university. So you would maybe take seminars that are more interesting Take advantage while you're still a student, there are a lot of benefits and yeah, unfortunately I don't have statistics, how many people finish in six semesters, how many in seven, how many in eight, but honestly, it really doesn't matter if you take three years, if you take four years, if you take five years, it doesn't matter. Obviously try to finish um, because the longer you prolong it, I've seen out of experience, people tend to get lazy and they just leave it and then it takes forever to finish, but at the same time, don't like rush it so much. And who would I recommend Vinfo to after having completed the bachelor? I would say it's quite nice if you want to be a bit more technical, but at the same time, not too technical, if that makes sense. For example, if you compare it to the informatics major, a lot of the courses that I just talked about, especially from the informatics section, informatics students have to take it as well, but they also have courses that go a little bit into more detail about uh, certain paradigms in computer science and also focus more on hardware. For example, they have the course called ERA, which focuses more on assembly and lower level computer things. So if you're really interested about computers and you're more of a technical guy, I would definitely recommend informatics more. I would say Vinfo is really nice if you compare sort of software and hardware and you're more interested in the software aspect of things. Um, and less in the hardware, practically almost none in the hardware, to be honest. But yeah, it's based on personal preference. And in the informatics major, I know you can also take sort of like a minor, either like in medicine, psychology, even business, but it's the percentage of business courses that you have is much lower than what you have with um, as a Vinfo student. And also, if you research more about TUM, you also know about Tum BVL, so basically management and technology, that major. And in that major, you basically have more business and economics courses. And 30% is technical. So you can choose between different technical fields. And one of them is informatics. I always get the question, what's the difference between like a Vinfo student and a Tum BVL student taking informatics, for example? And I would say the percentages of how many classes are technical and how many are business oriented. So I would say it's safe to say as a Vinfo student, at least 60% of your classes are more technical 
maybe even between 60 and 70 and then like around 30 to 40 are business whereas as in Tumbe VL it's sort of inverted so yeah Vinfo is a bit more technical than Tumbe VL like the management and technology major but it's less technical than the informatics course so it's like somewhere in between so a lot of people can see this as an advantage a lot of people can view it also as a disadvantage because you're kind of like a jack of all trades but expert and none but yeah again this is like debatable what's better what's worse i don't think it's even right to say what's better what's worse i think the better question is to ask does this fit you personally um is this better for you uh, as an individual will it give you more added value based on your weaknesses and strengths and also based upon your interests i hope this wasn't too subjective i'm just trying to spread some facts just one last thing, actually they updated the study plan, so I started back in 2018, but now if you start every study plan that started in 2021-2022 has a slightly different plan, and I'm just looking over it, and looks honestly very similar. I think the only thing they changed is they took out middleware and distributed systems and they put business analytics and machine learning which is honestly much more interesting in my opinion. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the only thing they changed and uh, they always change it every few years if you look back i don't know to the study plan back in 2013-14 there were also some differences but i think some of these courses especially in the first few semesters those aren't going to change most likely so yeah i hope i give you a good overview and um yeah let me know what type of videos you want to see and thanks for watching see you guys next time peace